Hey everybody, Jordan here with Hot Bike, and I'm with Brad Richards, Vice President of Design with Harley Davidson Motor Company. So today we had the unique opportunity to ride the new Nightster that this gentleman had the pleasure of kind of designing, leading the team, um, and creating what you see before you. Uh, I mean, inspiration was really 65 years of, of, of Sportster, yeah. and uh, you know, we spent a lot of time talking about the ethos of Sportster and what Sportster stood for for so many years uh, for the company, for so many of our customers. And in you know, in '57 when it was revealed, it was it was a muscle bike, it was a performance bike. So we were really adamant about whatever we did. We wanted to make sure that we didn't have to make ex you know any excuses for the performance. And so we knew we kind of knew the modern silhouette, but we also knew that in order to deliver the kind of raise the bar in terms of Sportster performance, putting the sport back in Sportster, we said a lot of that inside the studio. That it was going to be a challenge because um, you know with this new RevMax modular architecture, the engine's a stress bearing member, and uh, we no longer have the classic Sportster loop frame to kind of build everything around. Mm -hmm. And that was a real challenge. And if you think about Pan America and Sports Dress, which were two bikes that utilized the same architecture, um, those bikes were a little bit easier for us to execute from a form factor standpoint, from a design standpoint, because nothing had really come before them. So there weren't really expectations. Um, but we knew with Nightster, this was the bike that had to speak to so many Sportster owners out there that, that love the, the form factor that, that it had evolved into over the years. Mm -hmm. So, and we had to get there without some of the, the structure and, and, and kind of touchdown points, if you will, that the current Sportster has. So that was, that was a real challenge for us to kind of package it, package a, a very classic silhouette in an extremely modern architecture. Yeah, yeah, that's that's probably one of the tricky things with with your job, right? Yeah. Is is uh, speaking to that kind of traditionalist Harley Sportster right. customer clientele yeah. and modernizing everything about it. I right. mean, obviously, there's some things that you can see the styling, you know, like with this rear section, it looks very classic Sportster. Right. Um, but obviously, the engine, the engine is super unique. Uh, the liquid cooled motor, um, peppy, but I guess it, in terms of trying to retain um, those that DNA of classic Sportster with modern right. components is, is, yeah. is quite a feat. But you guys did a great job. Oh, thank you. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah. I mean, I, I probably the, probably the biggest challenge for us was really the it's the top cover on the motor because um, the classic Sportster silhouette is either a peanut tank or it's a walnut tank. Yeah. And um, because we originally had to have fuel, air. <laughs> and a small tank in this in this this position on the motorcycle, we realized that one of those things sort of had to give, and we didn't want to give on the proportions, the kind of the, the beautiful peanut slash walnut uh, shaped tank. Um, so that meant that either air or fuel had to move. So that really gave us the decision to put fuel under the seat. That also uh, kept us from using the mono shock that we have on Pan America and Sportster because the fuel tank now sits in the mono shock area. Uh, which was a win for the design team because we really wanted to have the dual outboard shocks and the chopped rear fender, which um, would have been a challenge with the mono shock setup. So we kind of had some, we kind of had the universe working with us a little bit there in some of those decisions. And then it was a matter of the 19 inch front wheel, 16 inch rear wheel, speed screen, the smallest um, headlamp, round headlamp, analog gauge. Um, and then really, that just the, we, it's, it's pretty much exactly the Iron 1200 rider triangle so when you sat on it today it probably felt familiar to you if you've had any spent any time on that motorcycle i have yeah, yeah. and it did and it yeah. did yeah. um it I, another thing too and, and i think our audience appreciates this is i feel like this stock platform leaves a lot of potential for customization yeah customization means so much to sports too. if you think about i don't know if there's another motorcycle that people have cut apart and re-welded and put back together into so many different forms and shapes and sports suits. I mean, it really, we, 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 you know, our, our, our go-to-market theme was instrument of, of expression and it truly is. Yeah. Um, and so that, but when you're talking about no, a, a motorcycle without a frame, as someone who builds custom motorcycles myself, I'm like, well, how is that going to work? You know, so, mm -hmm. um, but we quickly realized, you know, we, there was a pretty big breakthrough 
just from in terms of our internal mindset, when we realize that by taking the fuel from on top of the motor and putting it under the seat, all of a sudden as a customizer or a builder, I don't have to deal with fuel here anymore. And that just opens up a whole new world, in my opinion, of what we're gonna see people do with this motorcycle. And one of the examples of that is um, Hidye from Hyde Motorcycle in Japan, who's featured in our um, Instrument of Expression go-to-market um, video. He did sort of a one-piece Tracy-looking body, which I just thought was so cool that he took full advantage of the fact that he doesn't have to mess with fuel anymore. And so, um, and then it, think about like, you know, people flat tracking and hooligan, like, like hooligan racing the bike, and, and uh, it just, to me, it was like, it went from something where I was like, I don't know how we're gonna, how the people are gonna kind of deal with this to, oh, this is gonna be a huge enabler for folks to think differently about customization, and the ease of customization on a motorcycle. And I think clearly, if, if you look at the five or six built bikes that were built for that video, um, you, you had a breadth of ideas and, and form factors and use cases. So I think Sportster customization is alive and well with the new architecture. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And, and there were some definite, you know, <clears throat> Different ends of the spectrum in terms of customization. You had Brandon's from the Speed Merchant, like right. the, the thing flat track awesome. style. Yeah, yeah, super awesome. Yeah. And then Hyde motorcycles. Yeah, uh, that, that thing was yep. very unique and just kind of like it, you did a double take when you saw it. First. Right. So it's right. cool to see, you know, initially what's what's already been done and what right. will you know come right in the future. Hundred percent. So you're also a very avid motorcycle kind of collector, yep. junkie, yeah. nut. Yeah. What have you? <laughs> I am, yeah. How many motorcycles do you have? Um, well, um, I think there's, I, I, I don't like to give the number because it sounds insane, but I, <laughs> I think there's, I think it's like 14. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I would say 90% of them are, are Harley Davidson. Yeah. So I try to have a, I have a Harley from every era, from 1939, kind of up. Um, I need to get some early stuff, but I, I, you know, that's hard stuff to find, but. My first Harley um, in the, I think it was in the early 2000s, was a 1939 ULH Big Twin Flathead. Still have that bike. It's actually, all of them run too. I just, that, that bike is the one bike that I'm sort of re rebuilding right now. I'm going from bobber to chopper on it. Yeah. Um, and then there's three pan heads, a knucklehead, um, three sportsters. Um, I don't know, you know, it's, it, when you sit down and like start to think about it, you realize how sick you really are yeah in terms of <laughs> the, the, the collecting disease you know sure yeah, sure yeah. so you've been an, an avid Harley Davidson fan oh, yeah. well before you started working for Harley yeah. Davidson yeah. right yeah I've been you know I've been into the brand since probably uh, 99 98 99 kind of around around there yeah um, I had some really I, I worked at Ford Motor Company in the design department there and one of my uh, one of my bosses was an avid motorcycle like vintage motorcycle nut, and he still is. And he's really into Harley mainly, but he has some Indians. Um, his name's Gordon Plato. He still works at, at Ford. He's, uh, um, he's in charge of truck uh, design, I believe, at this point. But he, he, I was a rider, but I wasn't a Harley rider. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, hey man, you gotta get into Harleys, you know? And I was like, Harleys? I don't want a Harley, you know? And uh, you know, I was into like European stuff, and, and he's like, no, you need, to, you need to check out Harley Davidson. and, and uh, and so he took me to a swap meet. We went to Wasion. This is probably 98, 99. Nice. And, um, and then I just, I couldn't believe the sense of community and the old bikes and it just, it was so cool. I thought, well, you know, the brand that I was on at the time, there was nothing like that. There was no sense of community and, um, and just kind of everyone celebrating the brand and, and then kind of the interchangeability of the parts and, and the opportunity to kind of express yourself through that era of motorcycle, uh, which you know, 30s and 40s and 50s Harleys are my kind of my thing, and mm -hmm. um, you can it's it's much like Sportster. Uh, you can kind of make whatever you want out of that collection of parts, which I thought was just the coolest the coolest thing, and and that was it. I got bit, and then we had I was fortunate enough to get uh, because he was in charge of the Harley Davidson F150 program where we co-branded. Harley Davidson, we had Harley Davidson pickup trucks basically, mm -hmm. and um, and so we would we would meet with Willie twice a year. He would come to the studio, um, he and, and the team, and then we would uh, we would go to either Sturgis or Daytona together, and and we talk about the design of like the next truck, yeah, the Harley truck. And so that really got me because all of a sudden I'm talking to you know Willie G, and then you know he's such a an incredible you know, advocate of human centric design, meaning that he just he really listens to the customers and has the ability to kind of 
just pick up on what's coming next, you know. And yeah. I just thought that was like, wow, this is what a great design leader. And, and then just by fate in the universe, you know, I eventually got hired by Harley, and and, uh, and now I'm, I'm in the fortunate position to kind of be doing the same thing that he was doing. And uh, I, I still pinch myself when I say that, but it's uh, so yeah, tremendous responsibility, but really stoked. And I still love the old bikes. They're I just. I, lo I love, Har I just love everything about Harley Davidson. Yeah. It, it shows. Yeah, oh, thanks man. It shows in, in the work that you do. Yeah, I think that you, is it, you did Lowrider S? Yeah, Yeah. well, I mean, The original Lowrider S when it was Dyna platform? 16, 16 and a half, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, keep in mind when, when someone says, you, you know, you've penned a bike, you've done this, it's like, I'm, this, I'm the leader of the design sure. team, right? Yeah. So I, I get to pick the sketches and kind of put parts together from different sketches. And so if there's any, if there's any real credit to be given, it's to the design team, folks like Dice Nagayo who penned uh, Lowrider S, and, yep. and, 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 and then Tyler Kuhn who, who penned this motorcycle. So um, I'm really kind of just managing all their vacation schedules. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's very humble of you. Yeah. But I know it takes a team, and, and yeah. you lead a good one. Yeah, I mean, so. it's been great putting the team together, and I think we have a solid team right now. And future's the limit with the new RevMax modular architecture. And then keep in mind, too, that like the the push the classic push rod air cooled product that I'm sure a lot of your readers are passionate about. Yep. Like that's not going anywhere. You know this we think I kind of kind of see RevMax as sort of like the techie performance first architecture for those customers, and then you you, you can still get the classic Milwaukee Eight uh, push rod air cooled V twin experience for those classic bikes like the Lowrider S and Lowrider ST. Mm -hmm. um, of course, our touring product and. Uh, and that stuff's not going away because those are two very, I think they're just, they, they, they share similarities in the character of the products that they have. There's a line there, but, um, but you know, they're, they're, they're a different experience as well in terms of the capabilities and so on and what the expectations are from those customers. Yeah. Um, so Sportster S, yeah. now the Nightster. Right. We're looking forward to seeing what's next from the Sportster yeah. platform. Yeah, so am I. So, and yeah. obviously the, the rest of the, the models uh, right. within the Harley Davidson family. So yeah, keep up the great work. Thank you and, so much, uh, Appreciate th that. Thank you for the time. Yeah. And uh, yeah, thanks, thanks again, hey, man. Thank, yeah, thanks for everything you do, and thanks for coming, and thanks to all your readers, too, for supporting the brand. Yeah, thank you. Yeah.